you're listening to the Prepper Recon Podcast. For questions, comments, and podcast archives, go to PrepperRecon.com. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at ReadyMadeResources.com. Trading Post in the Woods is ran by veteran crisis responders who know how important it is to be prepared. They specialize in comprehensive natural survival remedy kits, preparedness and homesteading supplies, as well as skills training. Visit them online today at tradingpostinthewoods.com. This is the second half of my interview with Bob Griswold of readymaderesources.com. Enjoy the show. We have, again, this fifth element within our government, and we talked about the, the, you know, the education, Hollywood, the news media, CIA, other le- levels of government, law enforcement that are openly hostile towards other branches of law enforcement or government or whatever. They're, they're fighting each other verbally. People saying they won't obey their commander in chief. Unbelievable. I've never heard this before. Never. And so what I would do is I'd warn my fellow Americans, the ones that love peace and patriot, and that love the, that love their families. Um, it, it, it really is time to get ready for what God says is coming. I mean, I, I challenge anyone, Mark. I challenge anyone. I put out the level of challenge. If you can show me in the scripture or in history or a nation that has done what we are doing and has done, the murder of our children, the, the breakup of the, the, the common of our, the, 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 the description of marriage, if you can show me any historical example where those societies have not fallen into absolute despair and violence, I, w- I will back up and admit I'm wrong. But but I don't see that in the scripture. I see a holy God, especially if I go back to De- Deuteronomy. He said, "These things you will do if you if you do these things, you will be blessed." And I, I read those things, and I don't see us doing any of them, or if we're doing any of them, they're very minor. I look at the things that he says if we do, we'll be cursed. I think there's 17 blessings and 38 curses in Deuteronomy 28. I, I see us doing most of the things that he says he'll curse us for. One of those curses so, is confusion of mind, and you're talking absolutely. about you're talking about uh, telling boys that that they might be a, actually be a girl, even though they have the anatomy and the DNA of a man, or they might not be a girl. They might not be anything. They might just be something in between, and they might be, uh, you know, some other species altogether. Make it up day by day as they go. I'm that's, a girl today, I'm a boy tomorrow, and I'm. I mean, th- th- that's these confusion have of like mind. Fifty different definitions of sexuality. You, you know, there's no longer male, female. There's transgender. There's this. They have fifty definitions of sixty definitions, whatever it is, of, of human sexuality. It's insanity. But that's I mean, that. that that's, it's. That's that curse. That's the that's the confusion of mind, and that's what we're reaping from. You know, we sowed this seed when we took prayer and Bible out of the school system, and and we replaced it with an atheistic uh, worldview, which was propagated through Darwinism, um, through evolution theology. Because evolution isn't. It's not. It's not. It doesn't have a. It, it's not. Uh, Void of any any uh, understanding of theology, it, it, that is its own theology. It says there is no God. Everything happened by itself, and 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 now we're reaping this huge crop of confusion of mind, and 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 it's it's once again being propagated by the public school system. Yeah, again, so. When, when people think that there's a division on government and they see these snowflakes out there, you know, blocking highways and things, and you know, their colleges, dis, disgruntled college kids, it is they might be the cannon fodder, and that's what they are. They're the cannon fodder of the left. But this this in, this sedition and insurgency in our government goes far far deeper than just a bunch of college kids disgruntled that they're not getting more of my money. This. It is absolutely fundamental, basic levels of our government and society that are diametrically opposed to one another with with blood in their eyes opposed. I mean these people have blood in their eyes for us. Not only do they hate Donald Trump, they've, they've openly admitted they'd like to kill him. I mean Madonna said she'd like to blow up the White House. Um, these people have hatred in their heart towards us. 
they openly have disdain for people with with a conservative or a Christian value. They openly express that disdain. Uh, they they openly call some of them are calling for the imprisonment of people that disagree with them. Um, Bill Nye said that he believes people that disagree with climate change should be put in prison. I mean, dissension, disagreement. We disagree. We can be put in prison. This is unbelievable we see going on, and yet I challenge and I just exhort my fellow bro- brothers and conservatives out there that are listening that d- to do the historical checks yourself. Check the scripture. Check history. If I'm, if, I'm being, if I'm being some way misleading in what I read in the scripture or read in history, let me know. I don't think I am. I, I see these signs, and they're very, very disturbing. Um, I see the moral corruption, and the church is absolutely silent on it. In fact, I was just reading some articles the other day that even now conservative churches are reaching out and trying to embrace Islam. And we are just so – I mean the theology of Islam and the theology of Christianity are so far apart. It's, it is. It's, it's good and evil. You can't make the two congruent. And yet we see this effort within the church to try to make it congruent, to try to deceive people into thinking that you know we, we serve the same God, we do this, we have these common values. We don't. At the end of the day, they do not think that Jesus Christ is the Savior of mankind, that, that, he, that he is the only propitiation for sin, that he is the only way to the Father. Je- that's what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is no other means of salvation, none. And so trying to make somehow a, a, a satanic philosophy that has raped and murdered its way across 1,400 years of history congruent with Christian values shows a level of deception, like you said, that's absolutely mind-boggling. It, it's, it staggers our mind to think people can believe that, that Christian people can believe it. It, it is not the case. Uh, and so um, I, I just encourage people as we see more and more of God's judgment brought onto our land… That they two things we need to make sure that we repent and that our lives are right with Jesus Christ, that we keep our walk with him pure and clean, that we um keep ourselves from the defilement of the flesh and the defilement of of what this world is portraying that we can do is acceptable um we need to we need to abandon that, and that's why I tell people you know get rid of your t v your t v is probably the the main importer of wickedness into our homes. Even if you do want to watch decent programming on TV, you're still subject to these commercials that they put on that are just horrendous, you know, that as far as their um pervert perverse nature, you see so many of these commercials like they said they can't it doesn't seem like they can sell a lawnmower without sex anymore. I see Disney's now coming out with a movie where there's could actually be two men kissing in the movie. Um, you know, it's it, so we see these levels of Perversion growing and growing and growing. We see the level of violence, and violence is one of those things in Deuteronomy 28 that he curses the society with. We see this violence, this violence rhetoric, violence increasing. And so I just encourage my brothers and sisters, do not fall into the trap of thinking that somehow we have escaped what God is doing. I think at the end of the day, it's very possible that Donald Trump will be what God uses to reveal the sin of America to its people. I, I definitely agree with my brother Steve on that, what he said, Steve Quayle. Um, and at the same time, uh, it might be the same thing that uses, that will eventually break the camel's back, that he's not going to give, they're not going to give. I'm not going to give, and the other side's not going to give, and we're going to come to the realization that we are uh, two governments operating within the same country. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPRECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. You know, Bob, I would give, I would say, you know, let's redraw the lines. Let's, let's make two Americas. And, you know, I'd be more than happy to, you know, let California go. They want to go be their own country. Hey, have at it. Um, I I can think of uh, several other geographical locations on the map that I'd be more than happy to uh, see not be part of America anymore. But I think that it's the, it's these control freaks on the left that they're not going to want to give up anything. And we see that, that, that venom 
just just like almost coming out of their eyes. It's just uh, the the anger and the hatred, and and I can't see these people letting go of of one square mile of America. They want they, they won't because they want to be right and they want it all. And it's and it's all or nothing, and you have to agree with them. I'm so happy to just let somebody have their opinion and, and me have mine, and agree to disagree. But they don't they don't operate like that, do they? No, they they do not. They operate as a nature of a parasitic host, because because they their, their religion is government. Government does not produce anything. Government consumes. So they have to have a host in order to. Enjoy their lives. I mean, politicians don't produce anything. They don't, they produce nothing. They create no jobs. They create nothing. They 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 live at the benefit of people that work, um, and so they have to tax in order to have the capital and to do what they do. And so they do not want to get rid of anybody that's producing capital. They want them as you know as a parasite. They want a host, and so they're not going to want to let go people that are independent and that work that produce. Because because they know that is their only source of finance. They they're, they're, they don't produce anything. They don't they don't create. I mean, you look at these politicians. How many of them have ever had a real job? Have had to make a payroll? Have ever had to produce something? Have ever had to you know, design, engineer something? They don't do that. Most of these politicians go there and they just live at, at, on a gravy train of our money. And then expect to dictate to us every way that we can use the rest of the money that we have that they've left us, and so they're not going to let one square inch go. Um, they will fight for it all. And even if we did, even if we did somehow come to an agreement where we could say we're going to have North and South America, you know, the, 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 what was hap- tried to happen in 1860, they would quickly then try to come in and subvert what was left to us. Um, that's the way they do it because they understand that that's the only way they can exist. They would have to subvert us. They would have to infiltrate and subvert what we uh, have become. And, and so, no, this historically is not going to end but one way. And uh, it agrees me to have to come to that conclusion, but it's a historical conclusion I come to, and it's a conclusion that I find in the Scripture. I mean, Israel split in half. You had the northern and southern kingdoms because of sin. That's what caused that division sin. And if you don't think it's going to happen here, then uh, again, I think you're really not looking at the facts as they present themselves. And I think so what we need to do at this point is to look and say, how do I then live? What does God expect me to do? Um, I, I think you know we could lay out this case all day long that we are in dire jeopardy, financial uh, jeopardy. We see Trump trying to close the borders and, and, and we see big portions of government saying, no, we're going to even just bring more in. They're openly resisting him. Um, we, we just see this division everywhere. So w- once we see these things, uh, what are we to do as Christian people? Um, and, and I think the first thing we need to do is examine our lives. We want God's blessing in our life. Now, there are none, no, none perfect among us. We all walk daily with the defilement of this flesh, and we all have to confess and walk before the Lord being cleansed in the blood of Christ on a regular basis because we do have that sin nature that still antagonizes us. But we have to look at the things that we can say, Lord, I want to put this aside. I want to live a life that's going to please you. And we do that by prayer and by reading the Scripture and by trying to obey the law that God has given us. And when we do those things, we will bring about his pleasure in our life. And as we bring about his pleasure in our life, he will bless us. It's not necessary that he'll bless us with things, and that's the perversion of the prosperity gospel. We're taught that he blesses us with things. No, he blesses us with things that are eternal. He gives great peace, have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Those are the blessings of God that we have internally inside of us, peace and spiritual health and the understanding of what is happening in the days and times in which we live, um, those are the blessings that God will reap upon us and bless us with. Um, the financial blessing might or might not come. I don't know. If it does, it could be good. Um, but the things you really want in this time of conflict, in this time of turmoil, this time of violence, I want to be a man of peace. 
I want a man that has the peace of God in my heart. I want to have a man who has been given wisdom from God to know how to live my life and how I should walk, how what I should do. You know, I have three boys. I have grandchildren. I want to see them in in glory. And I need wisdom daily how to raise my children. I need wisdom how to treat my wife. I, I, you know, all these things of, of, of the spiritual nature I want. And those are the blessings that are rain down on us if he finds our ways pleasing to him. And so this is what I encourage people, to get your life right with God. And that's why I say get rid of the TV. I mean, it's it's our sacred cow. We got rid of, his, of, of ours five years ago. My wife would have gotten rid of it long before that, but I kept arguing to keep it. And finally I said, okay, now I can tell you five years down the road I don't miss a bit of it. Not at all. It's, I mean, I don't miss anything on that thing. It, it's it's like I have found more time to read, to study, to pray, to do just uh, practical skills of learning homesteading skills because I'm not sitting in front of the TV for two or three hours a night. Uh, I've been able to learn more and do more. And so I just, just ask people to pray about that. Is, is that a sacred cow in your home? Do you need to get rid of it? And then so you, you and your family can spend time together maybe praying and seeking God of how you are to prepare for this moment that's coming, this moment when our country does divide. And, and you know, Mark, it's just not our country. The world lies under this power. You, you read it. I mean, in some ways, America is even more moral than other countries. But it, it, this whole this, this, this thing of perversion and, and decadence and, and rebellion against the Almighty – it is worldwide. It's global. As we see this global governance form, this global governance, their, their stated thing is the conglomeration of all religions. Well, we read that in the book of Revelation, the whore, the whore church of Revelation. It, we, we see them pushing towards this goal, the fulfillment of history, the fulfillment of what we read and see in the book of Revelation. And again, I'm not giving dates on it, but we see a push towards that, that um, – this is what the world is pushing for. They're not pushing for Christ only. They're not pushing for you know serve, to serve the true and living God. They want to serve the pantheon of gods. We all come together and sing kumbaya, and it's not going to work that way. So as as a Christian person understanding the scripture, I want to say I want my life to please the Lord. But at the same time, I, I want to say are there practical things that I can do that will help my family in the time of, of trouble, in the time of tribulation? Are there things that I can do right now? Um, you know, let's just say back up a minute. Most people spend two or three hundred dollars a month on cable. If you got rid of that two or three hundred dollars a month, what could you do with it? What kind of preps could you do for your family for two or three hundred dollars a month? I mean, I know we were spending two hundred twenty-five dollars on cable a month, and you know, I never watched ninety percent of it, but I would just, you just paid for it. That's it's there. But you know, so we've saved that money for over five years. That's a, a, a quite a bit of money. Um, so I would tell people, you know, you, you, you want to have food in your house for your family. I mean, it, it is the most basic of human needs. We need to have food. You know, the Numana food, it's the non-GMO organic food. I strongly promote the Numana products because of that. Um, I think we, we every, every Christian family should look at having, you know, I recommend a year. I, mean, I could easily see a downturn of a year. If you read our, our year in hell, there's a story on on the internet about a family who went through the Bosnian conflict and you know what food depri deprivation made people do um, you know every manner of human vice was on the table and was a barterable commodity when people got hungry um, and again one of the curses is that God will send famine on the land because of our sin and if we believe the word of God what do, what do we believe? Do I, do I want to believe the Word of God, or do I want to believe what the stock market's doing? Which do I choose to believe? Well, I choose to believe the Word of God. That God says he's going to do these things. We talked about evolution. I mean, God says he made man. He created him after his own image. Evolution tries to paint this picture that time and chance created man. Which am I going to believe? Well, I'm going to believe what God says. I'm going to believe God's scenario versus what man's scenario says. So when it comes to this thing of judgment on our land because of our sin, I might look at the stock market. I might look at all these things and say, look, ooh, hee hoo, kumbaya, we're, everything's going great. But it's not. I mean, can we even fathom the debt we're in? Can we fathom the infiltration of our government that we have people calling for sedition and the murder of our president? That It's staggering. And so it, it's time to get that reality check and say, Lord, what do I do? And again, food, um, food, water, being able to have those things in our homes. Um, we need to also – we just saw that, that in, uh, I guess, in New England states, they had a massive internet outage. 
and, and during the fires that were here in Tennessee over the last you know summer, we saw the landlines and the cell phone service went down. I mean, all the land, the telephone poles would burn up. The, the cell phone towers were gone. Uh, people used communication. I, I, Mark, I cannot stress enough the ability for people to be able to communicate if the cell phone goes down and if the, the landlines go down, the Internet goes down, which we see happening. It's happened now more than once. Um, what are you going to do to contact your loved ones? What are you going to do to talk and find out where they're at? How are you going to communicate to develop a common plan if you cannot use your cell phone, if you cannot use the Internet? Um, ham radio has been the, the media that people have used now for 50, 60 years to talk, and we can talk long distance with ham radio, unlike the radios that you would buy in the store at the, at, you know, the, at the department store or the sporting goods store. Uh, those have a very, very limited range. Even though the box might say 30, 40 miles, the reality of it is you're going to get about a half a mile out of that radio, and that's it. Um, and so with ham radio, in the other case, you can talk 100 miles with them if you know how you to do it. And so you can actually communicate if, you're, if your wife's you know, 50, 60 miles away and something happens, you can communicate with your family members. Um, and so we strongly recommend everybody – get a ham radio license. It's not hard to do. I, I'm more than glad to help people achieve that goal in their life. There's some very, very good learning tools out there. Um, I'm, I'm a ham radio operator. My son's a ham radio operator. Um, we can help you do that because, again, when these services go down, ham radio is the only open source of communication that governments will have a very difficult time blocking and, and doing. They can turn your cell phone off. They can turn the Internet off. It's very, very difficult to turn ham radio off. It's very difficult. And so um, I, I would encourage everyone to get that. Uh, we sell a product called um, Anytone. Anytone is a, a brand of ham radio. They're handheld. They are excellent. Uh, they're weather resistant. I mean, you can listen to standard AM, FM. You can listen to NOAA. You can listen to aircraft. You can listen to Marine. You can listen to GRMS, MERS. You can listen to the, the UHF, VHF. So they, they do a lot. They transmit on UHF, VHF, which are the ham radio frequencies. And again, with that, with, that, with that and using what's called a repeater, which are all over the country, and they're usually solar backed up or battery backed up, you can hit that repeater with your radio, and that will put out a big footprint. So if, if I'm down here in Little Teleco Plains and my wife's up in Knoxville, I can actually talk to her. You had some uh, really good deals on uh, PVS-30. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, again, uh, having done a lot of security work overseas, I will say this. If, if you don't have night vision, and I'm not talking about the $500 unit you can get. I will tell people if you buy that $500 unit that you see, it's a piece of garbage. Uh, trust me. It's not going to work. I'm, I could sell those units if I wanted to. I mean, I, I have access to them as a, as a businessman and sell them, but I cannot morally sell you those pieces of junk because that's all they are. They're garbage. If you're going to buy good night vision, you're going to spend at least $2,000 on it, and that's for the minimal night vision, but I would recommend someone to get. The, 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 the night vision the U.S. military uses, it goes from three to $4,000. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. I would say this, even if you had to have a joint group purchase, Get it because what happens is you can operate basically 12 hours during the day. You can operate while it's the daytime. Uh, the night's going to come uh, and when no man can work, <laughs> and that's true with night vision also. At night, it's very difficult to see what's going on and what's happening. And so, yes, night vision is, is such an amazing product. It cuts through the dark. I can see hundreds of yards at night with my night vision on. And a dark night where you can't even see your hand in front of your face, I can see hundreds of yards away. It is that good. So what night vision, first of all, allows me to do is to, I, if I need to drive, now I don't do this if you own a piece of property or if you have someone to let you use the parking lot, that's fine. But don't do this down the road. If you block out your car, you can drive a car with night vision. Now, again, I want to make a caveat here. Do not do this driving down the highway. The policeman will probably arrest you and take your night vision away from you. If you get, if you get caught driving down the, the highway with the lights off on night vision on, they, they, they're not going to look well on it. So don't do it. But if you have a place you can practice with it, you can drive your car perfectly well with night vision on. You can hunt. Just think of the ability. If a lot of animals come out at night, I can hunt at night. They won't see me. I, I, my son and I do night vision hikes, and we go out, and um, we see all the animals that come out at night. They don't see us. I can see them perfectly. They don't see me at all. And so if I needed to put food on my table, I could, I could 
hunt at night. I can also bug out or bug in, meaning I can hike at night. When most people would not be able to travel, I can travel at night, which gives me a lot, a lot of camouflage. So I can travel and, and travel during the time when most and nobody else will be able to. So if I need to get away or get home, I can travel in the hours that most people can't. And then if I have to rest, I can rest during the day when people would be out to be able to see me. And so it gives me an advantage that other people will not have. I can do search and rescue at night. If I had to do medical work, I could do medical work at night. I don't have to turn lights on. If somebody's been injured, I can just look at my night vision and work on somebody. So the night vision gives you so many capabilities that you will not have. I can see predators at night, both two- and four-legged. So if somebody's you know, milling about my property, um, I'll be able to see them pretty clearly and, um, and deal with them however I need to deal with them. Um, you know. Hopefully, during times of peace, just a, a call to the police department, say there's a prowler, I see him, and you know that, that deals with it. But in times where you would have desperate people looking for food or other means of existence, um, you know, it gives you the ability to up the ante a bit. Um, and so night vision and communication, uh, to me, are the two elements that people in prepping always overlook. And, I'll, and the reason why is they look at radio, first of all, as technologically challenging and that they can't do it. Well, it's not that hard. We use a course called Ham Radio License Exam Online.com. Uh, it's part of a radio package we sell. We, you, you get this module where you can log in, and it's a repetitive learning tool. My 11-year-old at the time, Joshua, did not know anything about ham radio, not, nothing about radio. You just turn it on and push a button and talk. That's what he knew. But he went through this ham radio license exam online course, and he passed his test. So um, at 11 years old, he became the youngest ham radio operator in our county. Um, and, and so it was a good thing for him. He's uh, his call signs Kilo Mike Ford, Juliet Juliet Hotel, and so he's a ham radio operator. So I would recommend everybody to get their ham radio license. I strongly tell people don't just buy the radios and not get your license. You want to start learning how to use these products now. You want to start learning how to use these repeaters now. And and just to give you a quick description of what a repeater is, it's basically an amplifier that's sitting up on a radio tower somewhere, where my antenna sees it. And then I transmit to that repeater. That repeater amplifies my signal. Sometimes maybe my little 5-watt signal will be amplified to a 500 or 1,000 watts. And then it's retransmitted out from an elevated position, and radio signals work on line of sight. So all of a sudden, if that's three or 400 feet in the air, I might have 60, 70 miles line of sight versus, you know, I start going over the horizon. If I walk, start walking away from you, Mark, I go over the, start going over the horizon about four or five miles. So I start losing the ability to communicate at that distance with line of sight. But ham radio provides this other way to, to communicate. So um, what's it worth to, in a crisis to be able to find out where your loved ones are at or make a plan um, to, to you know, get together if you're in different parts of um, you know, work or school or you know, the, the, you know, the community? It, getting together after a, a crisis, to me, it's invaluable knowing how to get back in touch with my loved ones. That is invaluable knowing where they're at and finding them and developing a plan that we can get together and help each other and be a mutual resource for one another. And again, then also you, you have friends that you learn to that work with. So if, if I have a group of friends and I'm not talking about some kind of survival group, just even just friends that you, that use ham radio, you start talking back and forth and, you, and then you, you start to develop the benefit of having other friends and, and neighbors around that can start to provide assistance should something go south badly. And, and so it's, there's all upsides to getting your ham radio license. There's all upside to having ham radio and there are all upsides to having night vision. And with what I said about ham radio being a technological learning curve, people hit the, 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 the pocketbook when they look at night vision because it is a lot of money. And I generally do not recommend going into debt for things. I generally try to recommend people pay their way. But night vision is one of those things that I would say 10 minutes after a, a, um, a failure of civility moment, the lights go out um, and it gets dark outside, you're going to wish you had it because it all of a sudden you become the, the, the man who can see in the land of the blind. And that will be critically important. The PBS-14, that's, that's the one the military uses the most. You can head mount it. You can weapons mount it. You can handhold it. The PBS-30 you were talking about, we have a limited supply of those PBS-30s. And this, the U.S. military, the Army to be specific, 
turned them in because the Knights Armament, the manufacturer of these PVS-30s, developed a unit that took uh, CR-123 batteries as well as AA. And so the Army turned in the ones that take only AA batteries, turned them into Knights Armament, the manufacturer, and bought the new ones. These units look brand new, but then even Knights Armament took it one better. They completely reconditioned them, gave a new letter of compliance that they meet all the compliance for heat, cold, and submersion, and gave them a, a new factory warranty, the same as if you bought a new unit, and they're a fraction of the cost of what a new unit costs. I mean, we had a friend out the other night, and with a quarter moon under full cloud cover onto a 5 by 8 inch piece of steel, shot 1,014 yards and hit the steel. It's pretty impressive. Pretty amazing. Yes. So um, that's what these units are. And, and so right now there's a limited supply of these PVS-30s. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, they're a lot of money for anybody. Um, but, um, again, we have to evaluate. I, I go back, why do I prep, Mark? Why do I prep? I go prep because I believe what the Scripture tells about nations that fall into the patterns of sin we've fallen into, that judgment will come. And that's why I do what I do, because I love my wife, I love my children, I love my grandchildren. I'll, you know, my neighbors, I want to be able to do things. And so, you know, I, I prep for that reason. I think the historic and the biblical uh, precedent is there to to dissuade even the, even the most ardent uh, person who would object to happy days are here. I think if you paint the historic realities and the biblical realities to it, it's hard to deny those realities of what's coming. So. Bob, we really appreciate all the everything that you do for the community, and we appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. Well, Mark, you know, if anybody has any questions, I'm more than glad to have people call. They can call me on my 800 number, which is 800-627-3809. My website's readymaderesources.com. That's all one word, readymaderesources.com. And again, the number is 800-627-3809. I'm willing to take time. Don't feel like you have to buy something if you have a question. I'm willing to talk through and figure a plan that works for you, figure a plan that works for your budget, and try to come up with a plan that's going to help you and your family do better for what I see of the times of crisis coming. And then also, uh, I know everybody in the industry had massive shortages uh, in in the roll-up before the Shemitah, uh, which gives us an indication of, you know, um, when times are good, it seems like there's a lot of stuff around and that you'll be able to just get whatever you want whenever you want it. Um, but I think that that, that, that period before Shemitah showed us that, that that's not true. And when the event hits, it's too late, right? It, it will absolutely be too late. Um, the industry that provides food, water filtration, that is, general, is, is pretty a small industry. I mean to, to, to give 10,000 people in America a one-year food supply – would be a vast stretch of what this, these industries can do. And so, I mean, 10,000 people is a drop in the bucket. So, uh, you know, I tell people, again, I like Numana. Um, I like the fact that it's non-GMO and it's organic. I mean, Mountain House also makes good food and wise. We, we carry all those brands. But, you know, we strongly promote the Numana food because of that. Um, but look into it make sure your family has these 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 things on hand make sure that you have the ability to filter water make sure even with a small solar panel that you have the ability to charge maybe a a, a shortwave radio um, make sure these things there and i'm glad to talk with anybody about going through the needs that their family would have uh, make sure you have the ability for medical supplies um, there are medical supplies that you can buy at Walmart, and then there are more advanced medical supplies. I tell everybody you want to have things like that can stop arterial or venous bleeding. Um, the Cellox that we sell, it can stop bleeding of all sorts, including gunshot and ballistic uh, knife wounds. Those are available. I mean, how to deal with collapsed lungs. All these things, we, we sell medical supplies that deal with more advanced medical problems that you might face in a failure of civility where somebody has you know, done something that, that's been very injurious to you or your family, and you can save their life. Um, so at Ready-Made Resources, we really carry over 5,000 products, and uh, I, I'm more than glad. I even give people out my cell phone number that they can call me, and I'll talk with them and work through a plan that will help them and their families survive this. 
We are a community. The best national security policy we could ever have is to have families prepared. The, the one size fits all from big government, from FEMA, even in their best day, even if they were totally benevolent, is going to pale in comparison to the benefit of what each family prepared can do. That will be a far better um, implement of national security than one size fits all from the, from the federal government down. And so I just ca caution people. The question I would leave you with, is God – true when he says he brings sin and judgment on a nation that sins in the manner that we're doing. If not, then, then we can. We can go enjoy the stock market, watch the football games, do everything everybody else is doing, and live our lives and just have a good time. But if God's word is true, if it is true, do we look at the circumstance that we're surrounded with or we do we look at the word of God and say, we're in deep trouble? You know, Again, I go to the one I read, Deuteronomy 28, and I look at the historical examples of Israel and the judgment that came on Israel, and the judgment that came on even secular nations that violated the law of God, and, and horrific judgment came upon them. Um, I think we're at that door. I think we're seeing the preamble to it all right now in, in the division of the United States, the attack on our Constitution, Christian persecution. I, I think we're seeing it all happen. And so I would just tell everybody to pray, get right with God, and prepare. Bob, thanks again for making time for us today. Yes, sir. Thank you now. In a haunt for jackals by best-selling author Mark Goodwin, Danny Walker's survival retreat has been devastated by violence since the detonation of the EMP. Regent Slusher's designs on absolute power have already brought him to Danny's doorstep once, leaving a trail of blood and heartbreak in his wake. Another conflict with a malicious dictator will spell certain death for the remaining members of the compound. Danny's only hope is to infiltrate Schlusher's camp and bring him down from the inside. It's a risky proposition. If he is caught, he'll be executed as a spy, but there is no other alternative. In this epic struggle between good and evil, Danny's metal will be tested, his faith will be tried, and he'll have to dig deep for the courage to continue. Buy your copy of A Haunt for Jackals, book three of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.